Now, two major incidents have happened in Parliament a while ago. First, was there, there has been an amendment of the controversial Special Development Initiative budget in which the creation of a website is costed at 800,000 cities. Now, the other development is an apology rendered by Deputy Trades and Industry Minister Carlos Ahinkra. He just addressed an extremely brief press conference at which he was unwilling to answer any further questions but only to issue his apology. Joseph Opokugaku is standing by with details. He joins me now on the line. Hello, Joseph. Hello, Gishi. Let's start off with uh, Mr. Hinkroa. Because we're unable to see what happened in Parliament at the moment, give us, run us through it. What happened uh, at his press conference? Uh, well, so um, Carlos Ahinka, who is the MP for Tema West, a while ago, um, addressed the, the, the media and indicated that um, there was a recent incident just where he addressed the media a while ago which saw him um, hell insults as uh, former Deputy Information Minister and MP for not song Samuel Kujetu Ablakwa. You'd recall that, um, well, Samuel Ablakwa was addressing the media on the issue of allegations that the president uh, had been uh, invited to a dinner session and those who had access to him had been made to pay as much as 100,000 US mm -hmm. dollars. And while Samuel Kujetu Ablakwa was speaking to the media, um, Carlos Ahenkra interjected and held his horse as him, called him a thief, and claimed that he had stolen all through his life and his education. Well, Carlos Ahenkra a while ago told the media that he regrets those comments. Um, he says he's rendering an unqualified apology to Mr. Samuel Okujetu Ablakwa. He's rendering an unqualified apology to the Parliament of Ghana and additionally rendering an apology to uh, the good people of Ghana and indicated that this is something that he thinks uh, he could have handled better. Uh, but then, well, it, it all happened, and so uh, he's apologizing for that. We sought to get uh, some further reactions to, you know, uh, from him as to whether that means he is retracting the claim that he had made and that everything that he had said, uh, you know, said then represented an untruth. But um, he insisted on just delivering the statement that he came to deliver, and then after you know addressing the press, he made way without responding to any further question. Mm, what was his demeanor, Gakbo? So um, he was quite calm um, and, and jovial, even as he addressed the press. Um, I, I'm not too sure what exactly the arrangement was, but. Um, when the media was ready for him to go ahead with the interaction, at a point in time, he was asking uh, of the whereabouts of Samuel Ogurita Blackwa, the MP for North Tongue, and uh, he was indicating that uh, he, he wanted him to be by his side, even as he addressed the, the media on that particular issue. Probably they may or may not have had a prior arrangement to, to go ahead with this, but um, he, he was asking around for some of the Kujetua Blackwa. Um, he, he was indicating that uh, Mr. Blackwa is actually his brother, uh, and, and so uh, he's not too sure how come um, he, he held all of those uh, insults at him then. But he, he had a very calm demeanor. Uh, he, he was smiling all through. And um, he, he, he indicated that he was uh, so very much uh, regretting those comments that he passed the other day. Mm. Was uh, the Honorable Member of Parliament for North Tongo, Kujato Ablakwa, available uh, at the moment, uh, at the time? Or was he anywhere around Parliament today, during or before the press conference? Uh, so, um, particularly at the time when um, the MP for uh, Tema West, uh, Carlos Ahinkra, was uh, addressing the brief press conference, which lasted for less than uh, three minutes, well, uh, in the chamber, there was uh, another happening with regards mm -hmm. to the appropriations bill, which was actually being passed. But uh, Samuel Ablaka himself was not in the chamber then. Um, when, when, when this apology was actually okay. being delivered and it's been impossible reaching him mm -hmm. for a firm reaction as to whether he would go ahead with his right. uh, legal action or, exactly. or not. Uh, mm -hmm. We are yet to get a response from okay. Mr. Black. Okay, Joseph, I'm going to have you hold on for us briefly because we, have, we want to remind uh, viewers of what the confrontation uh, was all about. So here is Carlos Ahenkwa. When I return with Joseph, I'm going to ask him about uh, the Special Development Initiative Minister's issues in Parliament. But let's hear Carlos Ahenkwa, the initial confrontation which brought about today's um, apology. This is clear profiteering because, because, because we are not told that the MOU they signed with a private entity, they are a charity organization. We are not told that, we are not told what they are going to do with the sums that they have used 
public office to raise, use the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Ministry of Trade and Industry, not the private office of Mr. Lanchamati or Mr. Carlos Ahimkra. You use the office of president of Ghana, office of president. You use that to franchise, to raise funds, $100,000 to sit by him. This, this is unethical, it's immoral. It, it, it flies in the face of the Fees and Charges Act. You cannot defend this. This is desecrating the office we, of the president. Do we need a high-level probe why. on this? Maybe a parliamentary probe, you think? Yeah, we do. But first of all, we are demanding that all the sums extorted should be returned to the expatriates. We are also saying that the people of this country are owed an apology because it is clear, it is clear that they have dented the image of Ghana. And I can tell you that because I've been talking to the expatriate community. Let me let, let, let him know that he's a thief. You have stolen through your life and you have you are, you are, you, you, you have even lied through your education. Minister, Minister, can Please, you now listen to me. Okay. This guy who got his driver arrested because he stole his 25,000 from his uh, a car uh, when he had barely come into government I, because he's personalizing it. He personalized it, mentioned my name, and decided to go amok with this matter. That's the, that's the reason. That's the reason why I want to start from this angle, and I am very, very disturbed by the way they are lying their way through this matter. And I think that it's high time we bring it to a rest. Now, what is going on? Sometime, sometime this year, early this year, an organ, a event organizer called. Millennium Excellence Foundation, which is chaired by the NDC, uh, let me see, big wig, uh, Honorable Victor Beho, Ambassador Victor Beho, came up with his team and his board, came up with an idea to organize uh, an event for expatriate businesses in Ghana. This event was geared towards recognizing the importance of expatriates foreign direct inflows into this country, some of whom go back four generations. So that was the initial confrontation between the member, members of parliament, uh, Okujetua Blakwa, and Carlos Ahinkwa. Well, if his, his apology today is the second apology uh, that he's rendered first. He rendered one earlier on uh, Kukoko, on uh, Agnakwa-based uh, FM. We can hear him now on that apology. Well, for your opposition, you, you, that is what the Memorandum of Understanding said. That what? That, that the collections be made to the Ministry of Trade account so that they pick it from there and go. Okay, so have you given them the monies now? The monies you collected on your behalf? They, they, they go long gone. You, you've given them all the monies you collected? I can confirm to you that you have collected all the money. Every single 100% of the money. And the Trade Ministry did not reserve... All right, that's not the apology. Actually, an interview with Evans about the issues concerning that $100,000 uh, dollars there. Uh, w w we'll bring you his apology, definitely, uh, from, from Parliament. But right now, let's go on over the lines and speak to um, Dr. Uh, Draman. He's with the pa uh, Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Dr. Draman, thank you very much for your time here on The Pulse. I believe that you followed the development uh, between these two members of Parliament so far. Yes, I did. Mm. Today he's apologized. Does that suffice? Um, well, I apology, and then I also had uh, the reaction from Okujito uh, Blackwa. And uh, well, I mean, I think as they say in our in our religion, I mean, if you say I'm sorry, I think that uh, that's the last thing that anyone can say when uh, he or she does that's wrong. But you see. The challenge that we have is that, I mean, as they always say, there are certain words, once you utter them, you can't take them back. And this uh, person who has been offended thinks that uh, his reputation has been dragged into the mud. Mm. And, uh, and 
well, I mean, the course of action is up to him. But, I mean, overall, I mean, looking at it from uh, the angle of parliament and the, the kind of institution that these people work in, uh, the, and, 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 and the role models that they are for all of us, I think it's very unfortunate that uh, the Honorable Deputy Trade Minister did not deal with the issues and rather decided to go personal. And now we have this situation on our hands. Mm. Will, will this have any future implications for, for Parliament, even for the relationship between the two men and for the relationship between parliamentarians in general? Yes, indeed. I think that uh, this is only maybe... Uh, deepening the divisions that, that we, we have already seen uh, between the NDC and the MPP. And, I mean, these kinds of uh, events are not good for our country because instead of they together uh, bipartisanly look at our national issues, bipartisanly look at maybe issues of oversight and, and lawmaking and so on, when they start fighting, I think they can't even see eye to eye. Assuming these two people sit on the same committee, it's going to be very difficult to have to have them work together. And definitely, what you are going to see is that the NDC is going to be solidly behind Honorable Blackwa, and the MPP is going to be solidly behind uh, the minister. And this this is not good. This is not good for our democracy. Ramani, thank you very much for your time here on the polls. Uh, Dr. Rashid Ramani is with the Centre for Parliamentary Affairs. Let's go back to Gakpo. He has uh, the Member of Parliament for North Tongo, Kujetua Blakwa, who is obviously connected to this case uh, on standby. Hello. Uh, I don't know which of you I'm speaking to. Is this Joseph or is this uh, the Member of Parliament? Well, Joseph, if you can hear me, let's find out from the Member of Parliament whether he accepts this apology and whether this will lead to his withdrawal, the withdrawal of his uh, legal action. Well, he, he's actually refusing to comment um, on the issue for now. Um, he, he has indicated that he would want to go on with some um, consultation processes before um, eventually we, we, we will get him commenting or reacting to the uh, apology officially. And so um, I've, I've just been interacting with him and um, he, 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 he indicates that um, he, he's not ready to, 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 to react to this um, for now. What's his demeanor? Uh, um, uh, well, he's, he's um, looking quite calm. Um, well, he's um, getting back into the chamber, even as okay. um, he, 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 well, he, he, he to, 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 to describe how, how, how he's looking, well, he, he's That would be a bit difficult for you at the and, moment. And, and well, at the moment, he's getting back into the chamber, and okay. he won't comment any further. He won't comment any further. Let, let's get to the other issue uh, in that happened in Parliament, uh, Joseph. Now, the Special Development Initiative Minister, um, Hawa Kumsin, has said that she is ready to resign. That follows revelations that her 2018 budget is inflated. And before that, there have been demands by the minority in Parliament that the minister, who is also a member of Parliament for Uutu Senya East, oh. step down from a position that the minister has faced heavy criticism following revelations that, that he, she had budgeted to spend, among others, 800,000 cities on the development of a website. Well, the latest is that the budget has been amended by the majority leader in parliament on her behalf a while ago. Now, Joseph, bring us up to speed. How did we so, get here? So, um, eventually, it wasn't amended. Um, the majority leader, Sir Chairman Sabunsu, drew the attention of the House uh, to the fact that the minister has made a public statement indicating that uh, the figure that was contained for the development of the website is not exactly the 800,000 that was contained in the document that was brought to the House, but then it was 80,000 cities. And he uh, outlined a number of measures that could be taken to rectify the error because the budget for the ministry was actually approved three days ago, and uh, he, he, he made the point that one of the options is to go ahead and do the amendment for the House to do a, a new uh, approval for that particular uh, document. The second option was that they could pull the brakes on it 
and hold on when the Minister for Finance appears before MPs in the middle of next year to do a mid-term budget review, then the appropriate review can be done and the new figure will be approved. Uh, but then he went on to indicate that um, he would want to draw the attention of the House to that particular error, and uh, eventually we got uh, a directive on that from the uh, first deputy speaker who was in the seat, Joseph Osewusu, who indicated that since the budget had been approved already, there was nothing that could be done for now because eventually they were going ahead to approve the Appropriations Act. But then he gave the directive that the ministry would not have the authority to spend anything beyond the 80000 they have come to inform the House themselves that that is actually the right figure as far as um, the allocation for the development of the website is concerned. So they can't do that, and they look forward to the Minister uh, of Finance doing a proper review sometime in the middle of next year. The minority team raised some concerns about that. Um, the minority chief, uh, Muntaka Mubarak, indicated that he didn't see any provision when it comes to the standing orders of the House under which the majority leader was making that particular request with regards to the budget statement. And so uh, th there wasn't any standing legally for that. But eventually the Speaker said, well, they'll hold on for possibly uh, a full budget review. But for now, they can't spend beyond the 80000 that they've indicated to MPs is actually the fresh figure mm. as far mm. as the website development. But, but Joseph, the, the cost of the website is not the only bone of contention. There are several others in the budget. Um, for example, boreholes. And I don't have the figure at the moment, but there, there was an one hundred and thirty two thousand exactly for boreholes. Is it did the my members of parliament only speak about the website, the cost for the website, or did they speak about others in the budget? Uh, no, the focus was only on the cost of the website, uh, which uh, the minister had uh, indicated to the majority leader she wants change. Uh, with regards to the other items on, on, on that, including the borehole, which is to go for 132,000 cities, the six-unit classroom block, which is supposed to go for 660,000 mm. cities. Well, there was a conversation about that even before the budget was approved, and right. the majority leader of Saitiemen's Sabonso's position was that he saw that some of the figures had to be re-looked at, and that uh, they are expecting that even at the level of the ministry, even as the House gave approval for those uh, uh, proposed expenditures, they would as much as possible ensure value for money and not go ahead and hit the ceilings in terms of uh, those uh, alleged inflated figures that we saw in that particular document that was brought to the House. Mm, but the same mem members of Parliament did not uh, look at the, um, the total figure, the total figure, the total amount of the budget, even though we're being told now that the 800,000 was supposed to be 80,000. Did that? Did how did they reconcile that? The, so, the fact that they approved the budget, and that they didn't have any problem with that in the first place. So that's the tricky aspect of it because when you tally the figures in terms of um, the specific items in the budget that was approved eventually, it all amounts to the over 1.1 billion figure, which the house eventually approved. So that that. Uh, if it's uh, going down by up to 720,000, then some explanations need to be given as to what exactly would happen with the rest of the sum and when, uh, it, what exactly the plan for that is. Um, but um, the House and MP still insist that the only way they can review this would be when they do a midterm budget review. And so for now, uh, they are not exactly focusing on that, except that they are taking note of the minister's explanation that for their website development, the figure is a lot less, particularly uh, 720,000 cities less. We we'll look forward to those uh, visuals, uh, Joseph, but is there any other thing that happened in Parliament we should know about? So MPs are being called back um, a while ago. The House suspended sitting about an hour um, ago uh, uh, after the Appropriations Act was passed. And uh, this is a document which is eventually giving the government of Ghana the authority to spend uh, an amount to the tune of $67,279,955,000 for million. Uh, that's um, what the Parliament of Ghana has approved for government to spend for the year 2018. Once that uh, uh, document was passed and the Appropriation uh, Act was actually passed to law, the House agenda sit in. And right now, MPs are being called back. We are expecting the final addresses by the uh, majority and minority leaders, after which we expect the Speaker to give his closing address, even as uh, Parliament adjourns sitting until next year, bringing to an end the first year of the term of the Seventh Republic.
Mm. There'll be a lot of reviews on that as we go along. Joseph, thank you so much for that update. Joseph Opoku Gakbo with those details from Parliament. Interesting times in Parliament, I must say.